Hello, it's me, DB, and welcome to all things brass and technology. Today on the channel, I have a special playlist called Trumpet Moments. Trumpet Moments is times in my life that I heard a trumpet player play and my mind was blown. Mm -hmm. And today on the channel, that trumpet player that I want to talk about is Wynton Marsalis. Mm -hmm. Yes. Oh, yes. You know what's next. Let's get it. Let's get into this. So, first of all, you know, I'm talking to you, it's just like you're right here with me. Just two friends talking. That's the first thing. Second thing is every now and then I gotta take my glasses off because they're steaming up. Yeah, dude, because this is a steamy topic, this trumpet moment stuff. Okay, there you go with that. Third, subscribe to the channel. All things brass technology. I got so much content coming. And it's really been great serving the community. All I'm giving you is my life stories. All right? Sharing knowledge is nothing. Well, it's great to share your life experience with people. You know, because what we do is handed down. So, you know, you hand it down to the next generations and they hand it down. That's how we keep this stuff going. So follow me on this journey. And, you know, I know my fans, they like when I do long format videos. So they're like, oh, D, man, make your videos longer. So this one will be a little longer. So let's go back. It's 1990 and I graduate from Berkeley College of Music, and I get accepted to um, do my master's with Donald Byrd at Queens College in New York. So I, you know, I go to New York, and I'm doing my master's with Donald, and Donald Byrd is showing me all this amazing stuff. Word, Dr. Byrd, you dig. And all this time until I graduated in 95, you know, I was playing with an amazing saxophone player that really gave me my start, you know, named Antonio Hart. We were blazing throughout that whole time. Because, you know, I paid my way through my graduate studies. I had some help, UB Blake Scholarship, uh, Ontario Arts Council, uh, Canada Council. They helped me out. Thank you. But a large majority of the money was just from me playing where I got the money to um, get through graduate school. So I did a master's degree from 90 to 92 or 93 in jazz performance with Donald Byrd. And then Donald Byrd was like, okay, buddy, this is what's going to happen. You know, back then when you had mentors, they just laid everything out for you. And you did what they told you to if you're smart. You really had no option. So he said, okay, you're going to double back now. And you're going to do a master's degree in music education. I didn't want to do a master's degree in music education. But he said I had to do it. So I said, okay. And I had to go back to under, undergrad to do all the, you know, learn how to play clarinet, flute, upper strings, lower strings, all this stuff I didn't want to do. But, you know. In the end, he was right. 
That's why we have mentors because they have lived life and they are there to help you and make your path more straight. You dig? So, you know, I respected him so much and I just did what he told me to do. So I was at Queens College for five years. So at the end of my time at Queens College, Donald said, okay, you did good. Now you're going to go to Columbia University and get an EDD in, in education. You know, so that would enable me to be a principal of a school. And so I started that. I really didn't want to do that. But I got accepted to Columbia and I started doing that degree in EDD, which is a doctorate. And then Jimmy Heath called me and said, hey, we need to talk. Great Jimmy Heath, which he was my teacher at Queens College. So he calls me and I'm a straight shooter. I'm telling you the truth. People may get mad, but I'm telling you the truth. So Jimmy Heath calls me in and says, okay, listen, man, they're starting this new school in Boston at New England Conservatory called the Thelonious Monk Institute, Institute of Jazz. I said, okay, that's nice. Tell me more. He said, they're going to take six students for two years and groom them. Everything is free. And I was like, eh, I don't want to do that, man. I've been in school so long. I'm done, man. You know, and I was out playing, gigging, and everything was killing. I was in New York living in Queens, Jamaica. Queens. And um, I was like, man, I'm good, man. You know, I really don't want to do that. I'm at Columbia and I'm playing and everything is perfect. And he said, hey, listen, man, this could be a good opportunity. You know, because they're going to be bringing in a lot of cats, man. And it's free. Everything is paid for. I was like, he said, I'll give you a couple more years to shed and work on your stuff. Mm -hmm. Shed. He was very convincing. He had dig. So I said, okay, you know what? Let me do it. Now everything with the Thelonious Monk Institute, now the Herbie Hancock Institute is auditions. Auditions. You have to audition to get in. But I'm... The first class. The first two classes were at New England Conservatory. And the musical director was tall. And he played bass. His name was Ron Carter. Ron Carter was very hard on me. Oof. Man. He was tough. Yeah. But after my time with Ron Carter, I'll tell you this, I fear no musician, nobody. That's how tough he was, you know, it was rough. But I respected what he did for me, you know what I mean? And you know, hey, he has his way of teaching, which is amazing, because it really, yeah, really put things in perspective. And so, you know, I was still a little on the fence, but then I was like, okay, it's a good opportunity. And I said, who's teaching trumpet there? Classical. I love studying with classical teachers. And I found out Charlie Schluter, Boston Symphony principal trumpet player, was teaching there. And I was like, ooh, Charlie got a big sound. <laughs> and um, Tim Morrison. Yeah. So I said, oh, man. Okay, kill him. Yeah, I'm in. I'm in. So I relocated. Oh, let me backtrack. So... They were looking. They couldn't find trumpet and trombone. 
They just couldn't find trumpet and trombone. They had all the rhythm section. They had the they had the saxophone player, guitar player, but they couldn't find trumpet and trombone. So they recruited. No audition. That's that was the truth. So Jimmy was big in the institute. So he hit me up, said, "You want to do it?" And I said, "You know, after all that stuff I just talked about, I decided to do it." And my good friend Akili Jamal Haynes. He was at the new school, and Donald Byrd introduced me to Akili. And Akili was hanging out with Myron Walden. Myron Walden was at Manhattan School. Akili was at the new school, and I was at Queens. But Donald Byrd was teaching at Queens and Manhattan. And, you know, of course, and Donald went to Manhattan School of Music, but then that's where he got a chance to study with Vacchiano. And, you know, Donald Byrd hooked me up with William Vacchiano when I was um, at Queens College, which, yeah, that's a whole nother story. But at any rate, we're getting to Winton. It's all coming. It's all coming. So um, we grabbed Achille because Achille is a fantastic trombone player. So that was it. So we relocated to Boston to do this institute. And so it was a brand new institute, first class. So you know whenever there's a new program and you're the first class, there's going to be hiccups. And there was a lot of hiccups in the first year, but we worked it out. So basically, the, the Monk Institute was, they take six kids and you're in boot camp for two years. And they just bring in the greatest musicians and groom you week after week. So, you know, everybody came through there. Winton came there, through there. Jackie McLean came through there. Um, uh, Herbie came through there. Wayne came. Everybody. It was insane. And I'll tell you one thing. It got overwhelming because everybody came with their own philosophy of how to go about playing and writing. So after a while, Barry Harris came. Everybody. It was just insanity. It was so much information. And it got to the point where I just recorded everything and just took what I needed. You know, you know, because I had been out there playing already for like five years with Antonio. We probably went around the world two times. You know, we were grinding, you know. So I knew how I wanted to play and I just took what I needed from all these great musicians. And it was, you know, a huge compliment was from Barry Harris when Barry Harris came through. And he was like, hey man, the trumpet player is hearing some stuff. He knows how he wants to sound. And so Barry looked at me and said, hey, all the stuff that I'm showing you, just take what you need. And man, that was, I, man, I'll never forget that. I was so proud that he could hear that I was hearing some stuff and was so gracious to bless me with that statement. So, all these great musicians are coming through, then I hear Winton's coming through. I was like, uh-oh, <laughs> you dig? Skate is coming through. I said, like, cool, so he came through and he was awesome, man. He was awesome. So, this is what happened. We're in rehearsal. We were rehearsing, I think some Thelonious Monk tunes or something. May have been in Pristafree. I think that's a Pristafree, right? And his tuning slide got stuck and he was sharp. And so I saw you, you know, he's sitting right beside me, man, over here to, to my right. And I see him messing around with his tuning slide and he can't get his tuning slide out. So he, I said, yo, you good? And he was like, man, my tuning slide is stuck. I'm sharp. <laughs> so I'm like, 
Yeah, I mean, it sounded great to me, but I guess, you know, he's feeling the vibration and he didn't like, you know, the vibration of, you know, being so sharp. I didn't hear that, but it is what it is. So, Akili was messing around with the trumpet, right? The trombonist. And so he had this, like, maybe, <laughs> this maybe $50 piece of crap trumpet that he had bought. And it was in the corner. So Wit, <laughs> I can't even get the story out, man. So Wit is looking around the room and he sees that $50 trumpet. And he, he taps me on the thigh and says, yo, bro. Yo, is, it, is that any good? I said, I mean, it's functional, but it's a piece of crap. And so <laughs> he grabs the horn, puts his mouthpiece in it, plays a couple notes, you know, does some adjustments. And then we start playing the arrangement and this cat, this cat, Winter started blowing and it was unbelievable, unbelievable. I couldn't believe it. What he was playing on this horn that was just to me, not even functional. He sounded exactly the same as his $20,000 trumpet. I was like, wow, 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 wow. <laughs> Unreal. Intonation, it sounded exactly the same as his $20,000 monet. I was like, man, this guy's incredible, man. Incredible. We know, and if you don't know, you better know, but we all know he's incredible. You did. But it's different when you're a trumpet player and you're sitting right by, beside the cat checking him out, like right next to you. <laughs> you know, you can see breathing everything. And I'm like, wow, man, that's incredible. So, you know, he finishes blowing and my mind is just gone. I'm blown, man. And so I think the saxophone player was soloing and went, <laughs> went to taps me on the thigh and comes over to my ear and whispers. And this is what he said. <laughs> this is what he said, man. He says, say, bro, it's not the trumpet. It's the cat that's playing it. You dig? Trumpet don't matter, man. If you can play, you can play. And I was like, Without a doubt, I I just witnessed that because I know that horn is a piece of crap and you sound exactly the same. My mind was, he was playing up and down that horn like it was nothing high, low, medium, the range in tune, perfect. That's a bad man. He can play, man. We all know that. Yes. Trumpet moments, times in my life that I've heard a trumpet player, my mind was blown. It was great, you know, interacting with him and watching him do his thing. You know, we did some jam sessions and I got a private lesson. Yeah, it was great, man. It was great. So much love and respect for that man and his abilities. And he's a good man. Nice man. Listen, my name is DB. All things brass and technology. And this is Trumpet Moments. Times in my life when I heard a trumpet player play and my mind was blown. Went to Marcellus. Yes. Now listen. If you like the content on this channel, all things brass and technology, please subscribe. It really helps. I'm doing my best to bring you everything. We're going to start live streaming from the channel soon. Yes, I'm going to have a beginner's corner where as if I'm teaching beginners. That's coming. You know, 
more EVI and synthesis stuff is coming, more production stuff is coming, more me in the studio and my process when I'm working in the studio is coming. All that stuff is coming to the channel. So subscribe. Click on the notification bell because that will let you know every time. Me, DB, in the place to be always coming faithfully straight down the middle. Don't sleep. Releases a new video. And you know what? I have some more trumpet moments coming up. I have another one with Roy Hargrove. Maybe another two. Yes, maybe another two. There was one with the trumpet shall sound. When me and Roy were playing at the Jazz Gallery, two trumpets. Ooh, that's a deep story. And I think I have the recording, audio. And there was another one with the big band. That'll be fun. I think I'm going to bring that to you. You know what? I'm out of here, though. I hope you enjoyed this. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for the support, and thank you for watching. I will see you soon.